Hey guys, welcome in that new video tutorial in which I will focus on how to import a pre-exported Golem simulation within Houdini and render it within Mantra. So here I'm running Golem 7.1 within Maya and I just took one of the um, character pack scene we had which is called the locomotion and just exported it as a simulation cache. So here the simulation has been baked and exported and uh, now I can uh, just uh, scrabble within the time within Maya. Uh, on top of that cache, I added uh, some layout modifications. So I made a really quick setup here where I selected all of the characters and decided and decide to replace all the t-shirts with sweatshirts instead. So if I go back to the previous node and remove that modification, you can see they're all wearing a t-shirt. But with that layer here, I'm just changing that to make sure that they're all wearing now a sweatshirt. I'm going to save that file here as a, as a new uh, layout file here for my characters. And the best way to bring that simulation within Houdini is to actually use the simulation cache library. So whenever a new cache is exported, um, along with the simulation caches, we export a simulation cache library file. But here, as I added the layout on top, and uh, that step was not here, when I exported the cache, I need to use the simulation cache library. So I'm going to bring the simulation cache library here. And what I'm going to do is just import my current simulation cache as a preset with the simulation cache library and save that as a GSCB file, which stands from Golem Simulation Cache Library. And if I save this, now it's been saved as a new vignette. And that vignette has, you know, all the information about what's the name of the cache, what's the name of the crowd field, what's the name, or what's the name of the character files which are used here, what's the name of the layout, and the name of the terrain as well. And you can make as many vignettes as you want to inside a library file. Here I'm just having one, but you can just add more and more if you want. So let's bring that cache here within Houdini. So I can jump within Houdini. Um, I'm using uh, Houdini 17.5 there, and um, whenever a new uh, simulation, well, whenever you have installed the Golem plugin within Houdini, you should get a, a message about uh, the license uh, being imported properly um, within Houdini. So if you look at the Houdini console, you should get that information here that the license has been uh, found, which means the plugin has been loaded properly. And if it's been loaded properly, you can press the plus button here and within the shelves, you should be able to figure that there's a new shelf called the Golem shelf. And when you bring it, you can see three different icons here. So you can get the about button, which uh, gives you the information about what's the Golem for Houdini plugin version you're running right now. So it's here at 7.1. Forget about the uh, developer tags here. And it tells you the exact same information about the license. If we take a look at the other buttons which are available, one is the solution cache library and the other is the layout editor. So you can get those exact same tool within Houdini. So I can open the solution cache library file I've just exported from Maya, uh, which I believe is here. Okay, so Houdini GSCB. Uh, I can see my presets and when I click it, uh, it adds a new node in my scene, which is a geo node. And when I jump into that geo node, I'm having a golem cache proxy node. And if we take a look at this node here, it has all the information about the node. So uh, what's the name of the crowd field, the cache name, uh, the cache directory. So the exact same stuff which has been saved into the GSCD file. And as soon as we just uh, jump into a valid frame, because uh, frame one was not a valid frame into my simulation, it has not been exported. But as soon as I jump into a valid frame, I can get the actual geometry for my character being displayed by that node. And it's actual real Houdini geometry here, which means I can bring a scatter node, for example, and, uh, and uh, connect that to my Golem Cache Proxy node. And now you can see some particles being scattered where my characters are. So that's actual Houdini geometry. So it means you can interact with any effects you want to do within Houdini. And you can even render it within Mantra out of the box that will work. And the really nice thing about that node here is that it can be configured. So by default, it's using the skin mesh, which is actual geometry. But you can say, I would like to use maybe skeletons in instead, or I would like to use bounding boxes to get something which is 
uh, way more efficient within the viewport uh, and easier to handle. And when you're going to render that within Mantra, you will still get some jargon. Um, so what about the layout? Uh, I mentioned that you can open the layout editor. So you, right now they are wearing the sweatshirt as I've uh, defined within my simulation. So let's say you want to open the layout here. Um, so let's open the same file which has been loaded within uh, my cache proxy. I can get the exact same stuff running here. So I can get my, uh, my layout file. And if I decide to go uh, evaluate in that node instead, I can just uh, save this. And we will need to refresh that node. So the workflow is not uh, completely achieved yet. So to make sure to see what's going on, you need to first enable the layout and disable the layout. That's the best way to get a refresh. And as soon as you do that refresh, uh, you can see now that the characters are wearing a t-shirt. So once again, that's just the current workflow, but we, we're going to improve both performances and the layout workflow. But that means that uh, you can do whatever you want to. Uh, you can say, okay, here I added some characters. Uh, um, I, I changed uh, some uh, mesh assets, but let's say I would like to duplicate all my characters here. So let's just bring a duplicate node and uh, maybe let's just bring a translate node here and say, I want to translate those new duplicated characters um, of just one unit, let's say, and say, this is gonna be now my new node. Let's do the connections, okay, and save that. And as soon as it's saved and you're gonna refresh on the layout by enabling and disabling it, um, now you get twice more characters in the viewport with uh, the offset of one, so you can add a time offset. Let's say. So once again, that's the first version. It's a better version of the plugin, so uh, um, make sure to feedback whatever you want to use with that plugin, and uh, we're gonna still gonna work on it. So I uh, hope it makes sense and uh, it's helping and uh, see you into the next video.